video I'm going to show you how I make slab boxes. In fact I'm going to show you how I make these two particular slab boxes. I'll show you how I made the gallery for these boxes so that the lid stays in place and I'll also show you how to create a textured pattern on the clay if you want to make a textured slab box like this one. If you find this video helpful, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell and then you'll know when I upload a new video. Thanks for watching. Let's dive in. First of all, I press and tap the clay into a squarish block. It means that when you roll the clay out, you roll it into a squarish slab rather than a big round one. Um, because with a big round one you get lots of offcuts which need to be recycled so it's just easier to make it out of a squarish block of clay. So I start rolling the, um, rolling the clay with my rolling pin and then as I'm rolling I turn it over quite regularly. Turn it over so you're rolling both sides and also switch it around, change the orientation so you're rolling it in different directions too. It just means that as you're rolling the clay doesn't get stretched too much in one direction. And then when the clay reaches a certain size I transfer it onto a loose piece of fabric which means that um, it's just handier because it means you can lift up the clay slab easily without stretching the clay. I also use roller guides just to make sure that the clay is an even thickness across the slab and also I want the clay to be well the roller guides here that I'm using are six millimeters which is about a quarter of an inch and that I find that that's a good thickness for making slab boxes. And then when the clay slab is big enough I run a rubber rib over the surface just to get rid of any texture or dents in the clay and also just to align the clay particles. And then when I've ripped one side what I do is I put another sheet on top, sheet of fabric on top which means that you can turn it over quite easily. One sheet on top, hand underneath, flip it over and then you can peel the underside sheet off and it means that you haven't stretched the clay in any way. And the fabric that I'm using there, I love this fabric, it's a, uh, a cotton backed vinyl tablecloth and it's great because the vinyl means that it doesn't absorb a lot of water um, but the cotton on the vinyl means that the clay doesn't stick to it as well so it's perfect for rolling slabs of clay on. So this is the template that I'm going to be using. You can download a copy of this template from my website if you want. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to get your own copy. And um, there are three pieces obviously to the template. You've got the top and the base, the short side and the long side. If I line the long side up against the base, you'll see that the bottom edge of the long side is the same as the length of the base, which is 8 inches. However, as you see, the short side is just a little bit shorter than the base. And the reason for that is you've got to factor in the thickness of the clay. The clay slab is um, six millimeters or a quarter of an inch thick and when I add the long side to the base it's going to take up six millimeters of the clay so the short side needs to be just a little bit shorter. So if you look at the base of the template, the base of the template is six and a half inches long and the short side is just six inches long and that's because um, about half an inch of the base is going to be taken up by the clay on the side slabs like that. If I put the roller guide on there you'll see that there's just enough room to compensate for the, the clay slab on the side. There's different ways of joining clay slabs together. You don't have to use this method. Um, for example you can create a beveled edge at the corner as well and I'll show you how to do a beveled edge later on in the video but for this particular box I'm just using the, the option where I'm butting the joints up against one another. So this is the long side as you can see I'm just finding a way of fitting onto the clay slab that I have rolled out. And then I've got a clay knife there and I'm just using the clay knife to carefully cut the template, to cut around the template. When you're using the clay knife it's just a good idea to keep the, the clay knife at a 90 degree angle to the table so you're not cutting the clay at an angle and also don't press too hard against the template because the template's just made of foam rubber or paper if you're using paper 
and you if you press too hard against the the template you'll get a wonky shaped slab so just be careful not to put too much pressure on it Now this clay slab at the moment is far too soft and fresh to do anything with. It needs to firm up quite a bit before you can actually use it to make the slab box. It needs to be soft leather hard to really be building with, uh, with the slabs. Um, and I'll show you how I, I dry them out and keep them flat at the same time in a minute. But just for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it to one side whilst I create the other slabs. So I'm putting a piece of paper on top there. And the piece of paper is just to stop it from sticking to the surface that I'm going to leave it on for a moment. And this is a flexible um, chopping board, which you can buy from any kind of um, hardware shop or on Amazon. They're really handy for slab building because they're thin, um, but they give enough support to carry clay slabs around. So I'm just flipping the piece of fabric over, peeling it off, and then... You can see it's supported by the flexible slab, but the piece of paper is in between, just stopping it from getting stuck to the, um, the plastic board. So what I do is I repeat that process for all five pieces of the template. You've got two, you've got a base, a top side, which are the same size, two long sides and two short sides. And then once I've cut them all out, I transfer them all to a piece of wood like this. Put the slabs on a piece of paper, slide them off and put them on a piece of flat plywood like this. I'm only putting four of the, of the um, pieces of clay onto this one because I, I can only fit four pieces on this piece of wood. Um, but put, put them all on a piece of wood. And then once you've transferred them, I put a, another piece of wood on top putting it on gently so you're not crushing the slabs and then I just leave them there for um, about 24 hours and after about 24 hours when you lift the top piece of plywood up what you have is um, some pieces of clay which are much easier to work with because the clay's stiffened up but you can see there's a little bit of flex in it there um, it's not completely dry but you can handle it without the clay losing its shape too much. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the roller guide to mark on the base, this, this piece of clay here, that's the base, I'm just marking where I want to score into the clay so that I can join the pieces of clay together. And I'm using the roller guide because I know that that's the thickness of the slab that I'm joining to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to score into the base and I'm also going to score along the edge and of that side piece and also along the bottom edge of the side piece too. And then I'm going to apply some slip and join them all together. So I'm going to mark along the edge of the long side slab too with the needle tool. You don't have to mark on the clay where you're going to score if you don't like. You can just eyeball it if you want to, but I prefer to, to mark it first to be precise. So I'm going to score into the clay using my serrated rib tool. You can use other things. You can use a fork or you can use something like this. It's just a clay scoring tool. I prefer the rib tool just because it's easier to just be a bit more precise with it. So scoring into the clay. And the reason it's really important to slip and score with clay slabs like this is because they've dried out a bit and if you don't add, if you don't score them and then add a bit of slip they'll almost certainly separate and crack whilst they're drying. Clay slabs have got, um, are quite vulnerable to cracking at joins anyway so um, it's, it's important just to make sure you score into the clay really, really well and then add a nice generous amount of slip too. And when I'm starting off making a slab box, I try to prepare three of the slabs of clay at the beginning so I can assemble it quite quickly because once you've got the base and two side pieces or side walls together, then the structure is relatively stable. But when you've just got the base and one wall, it's a bit wobbly and a bit precarious. So I'm just applying some slip to the scored areas there. The slip is really just clay that's been dissolved into water. Um, and it acts as a sort of a glue really. It makes quite a firm bond. It's surprising how 
quickly the um, the slip will stick the pieces of clay together. You'll see in a second when I add these um, this side wall here, just put it in position and um, line it up properly and then once it's lined up properly just give it a little bit of pressure and the clay slab will, will stick fairly firmly. I'm just putting that little slip pot next to it just in case it does fall over but it's really unlikely. So then once the first side is attached I'm just going to apply some slip to the second wall and then repeat the process just putting the slab in place and then just making sure that it's lined up correctly because the more accurately you line it up at this point the more well crafted the slab box will be once it's finished. So line it up properly and then just give it a little bit of pressure to seal those edges together. The next thing to do is to add a small clay coil to the inside seams of the box so far. So roll out a thin clay coil. Rolling a clay coil is a really simple thing to do but it can go a bit wrong time sometimes and it can go a bit wonky. There's a few um, tips that you can use to make a nice even clay coil. I've made a video on how to do that and I'll put a link in this video right now so that you can check that out if you want to. The trick here is to roll a thin clay coil because what you want to do is you want to add the coil to reinforce the join and to smooth it out but you don't want to add a lot of extra bulk to the box so just make sure you roll it out nice and thin. Then use whatever tool you're using to score into your clay to score along the join a little bit to create a bit of a key for the, for the, clay, to, the clay coil to um, nestle into. And at this point I'm not going to add slip to this scored surface because the clay coil that I've just made, it's quite fresh clay, it's already got quite a lot of moisture in it and because it's quite thin, if you add slip to a very thin coil that's already quite fresh, it just gets really mushy and it's quite difficult to actually um, blend it in. So just pressing the fresh clay coil into the join and remember to support the outside of the box as well with your other hand so that when you press on the join you're not going to press the clay slab off. And then once it's pressed into the corner you can use your fingers to blend it in to create a nice smooth seam on the inside surface of the box. And then I'm just going to use my clay knife there to tidy up that corner there. That's a little bit of clay coil has, has got um, smushed into that corner, but that needs to be clean because the short side of the box is going to be added to that, um, that end of the, uh, of the slab box uh, quite shortly. So just tidy it up first. And then I'm going to add another coil to the remaining two sides. And then once you've added a clay coil to each of the surfaces and blended it in, then the last step in just finishing it off and tidying it up is to wipe it over with a damp chamois leather. Chamois leather is just the perfect way to get rid of any fingerprint marks or tool marks or just little bumps and lumps in the clay and just gives it a really nice smooth finish.
Once you've tidied up the inside of the box, what you need to do is go around the outside and just check all the seams. You'll probably find that there's a few gaps and a few uneven surfaces that need to be smoothed out. One of the easiest ways of doing this is just to get a small piece of clay, quite soft fresh clay like the type that I'm using there, and you can just smear it into the gaps. It's a bit like using filler on a wall. Um, you don't need to roll a clay coil. If the clay is quite soft and fresh, you can just smear it in without ro rolling a coil because a coil just adds a lot of extra bulk. You can also tidy the outside of the box using a rib tool. There's a, a nice green rib tool by Mud Tools, which is quite nice, soft silicon, um, which does a good job of tidying, tidying clay surfaces. So just go around the box and just tidy up what you need to to give it a nice smooth finish. This red tool here is a clay shredder and it's a good idea when you've tidied up the outside edge of the box to just go along the rim of the box just to make sure it's nice and level. I use the shredder to do this. Be very careful with the shredder because it can take a lot of clay off very quickly so just run it over very lightly and then check to see how the rim is doing and whether it's level or not. It's now time to put the final slab on the top of the box. So what I'm going to do is just cover it up with some cellophane so that the top rim doesn't dry out any more than it needs to. And I'm going to prep the slab to go on top. That just involves um, slipping and scoring both sides. And then when it's ready, just carefully lower the slab onto the box. And then align the top slab with the sides. And then when it's in position, you can just gently press it into place. And then once it's been pressed into place, you can start to blend in the seams. And it's the same process as before, just blending in the seams. And then if you need to, if there's any little dips or gaps, just smear a little bit of fresh clay into the gaps and create a smooth surface. And then just repeat that process all the way around the whole of the slab box until you've got a nice, smooth surface on each side. Make a little mark on the top slab with your needle tool. This will help you know which side of the box is the last slab that you added. And once you've allowed the clay to set up for a little while, what you can do is you can use a paddle a paddle tool, wooden paddle tool, and just tap on the sides, um, on the edges and on the corners as well. It's just a way of sort of smoothing things off and rounding things out because very sharp edges and corners break easily um, when they're just being handled and also they have a ten tendency to crack as well um, when they're drying. So it's a good idea just to round off any corners and the, the paddle tool is just a nice way of doing that evenly without, it means you don't have to kind of wipe it down with a sponge and that kind of thing. Because if you use a sponge, it just adds more liquid to the clay. So just pat it with the paddle tool and then you can just wipe it down with a chamois leather afterwards and it'll give you a nice, um, a nice soft finish to the box. I've turned the box on its side and now what I'm doing is I'm going to make some marks all the way around where I want the um, want to cut the lid into the box. So I'm just using my ruler and I'm marking all the way around, I'm marking at, at two inches from the top slab. And then I'm going to cut around using those marks as a guide. I'm going to cut the clay using a sharp craft knife and I'm going to use the straight edge of a roller guide just to make sure that the line is straight. And I found the best way to do this is to do it quite gradually. Rather than just gouging right the way through the clay on the first pass, um, score in quite lightly into the clay. Because the thing is, with uh, when you're cutting clay with a sharp knife like that, it's quite easy for the blade to go off at a bit of a wonky angle. And if you're pressing hard and you're going right the way through, that's quite a difficult thing to recover from. But if you're just doing it lightly each time, if you make a mistake, then you can quite easily amend it. So just keep going around each time, cutting just a little bit deeper until you actually go through the clay itself.
and you see there the knife's gone right the way through and once you've gone all the way around the box you'll be able to remove the lid and doing it this way you know that the lid is going to fit the box perfectly so that's one of the advantages to creating a sealed box and then removing the lid Now what I'm doing there is I'm just making a little mark so that I know which side lines up with which. Because although it looks quite square, if I was to lift that lid and then turn it around and place it on the other way, it wouldn't fit very well. So I'm just making those marks so I know um, which, way to which way to orientate the lid when I put it back on again. So I'm just tidying up the rim of the lid there using various different tools, little modelling wooden tool, um, and sometimes using the craft knife or a rubber rib just making sure it's nice and neat and tidy without taking off too much clay you don't want to remove too much clay because if you change the shape of the rim the lid isn't going to fit on it very well but it's a good idea to just tidy it up to make it look nice and neat and then I'm going to repeat the process with the lid itself and then I'm rolling a coil because I want to add a thin coil all the way around the inside edge of the lid too just like I did with the rest of the box. To make sure that the lid of the box sits securely in place, you're going to have to make a gallery that goes around the top edge of the bottom half of the box. So the way that I do this is to I roll out a long thin strip of clay and the clay, these roller guides are three millimeters thick, which is about an eighth of an inch thick. So roll out long thin strip of clay and then mark it. I usually make the gallery, the strip for the gallery is about an inch and a half deep. So I'm just cutting that out now, long thin strip, an inch and a half deep. So when I've cut the strip of clay out, what I do is I cut it into shorter chunks because I want a strip of clay to go along each side of the slab box. And you'll see in this, um, in this picture here, you can see that I've already attached one of them to the far side. And I'm just attaching the second, second strip to the next long side of the box. So what I do is I hold it up in place. It's not attached yet, I'm just holding it in place and then I mark with the needle tool where I want to score. And then using the serrated rib tool, I just score into the clay again on both sides, on the box and on the strip, and also apply some slip onto both surfaces. And then press it into position. And you can press it into the corners as well. Um, you might find that the clay, if the clay is a little bit dry, you can get a little bit of cracking around the corners, but that's okay. As long as it's just little cracks, that's fine. You can just press it in with a, a wooden modelling tool, and then once it's in position, you can tidy up any tiny little cracks that might have appeared with a wooden, just blend them in with a wooden modelling tool. And then just go along the whole length of the strip, just blending it in and making it sure it's really firmly attached to the rim of the box. And then you've got these um, little end bits to go in to, to fit into the, uh, to the short ends of the box. What I do is I just put it into position. It's not attached here again. I just put it in position and then cut it to length. And you can remove it and then just trim off that little excess bit. Make sure that it fits okay. And then it's the same process of just slip and score, remembering to put some slip and s on the end of the uh, strip there, and then put it into position and press it into place. So I'm just giving it a bit of a tidy up and then here I'm just blending in the seam so that those joins are firmly attached to one another and here there was a tiny little gap so what I'm doing is I'm just putting a really small coil of clay in there just to make sure that it doesn't open up and crack when the clay dries and then 
similar sort of thing on the inside, just adding a little bit of extra clay just to make sure that that, that join doesn't open up at a later point. And this is a tip that I picked up from another video by a potter called, I think her name is Say Wan Lee, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, I used to smooth off the rim of the gallery using a damp chamois leather, but actually this is a really neat trick. Just use a piece of cellophane, fold it over the edge of the gallery, and then just slide your finger and thumb over the cellophane and it smooths out the rim of the gallery really nicely without introducing any more water to the clay. And then you need to see whether the lid still fits the base. And the chances are it's not going to go on immediately. It's probably going to stick at a few points. So just give it a gentle sort of wiggle and see if you can feel where it's sticking. And then you can just use, um, use your fingers to bend the gallery in just a little bit to see if that helps. If it still doesn't fit after you have pinched the sides of the gallery in and tried to put the lid on again, you can just take a little tool and scrape some of the, shave some of the, the gallery off. But actually I noticed that this one fit pretty much straight away afterwards. It helps if you put a piece of cellophane between the base and the lid just because the lid will slide on a little bit more easily over the plastic. And then I just go around and just double check that the sides are still flush with the base. And I'm just going to add a few little decorative details to the top of the box now. I'm making four small flat triangles of clay which I'm going to attach to the corners of the lid and the idea is that I'm going to, once the pot's been glazed, I'm going to use some gold luster overglaze on the little um, corner pieces to make them look like metal clasps so it gives it a sort of a, a treasure trove type of look. And then in addition to the little clasps on the top, I'm going to put a little button on the front of the box too. I'm just marking the centre of the front panel and then I'm making a small flat oval shape which I'm cutting in half and I'm going to put one half on the bottom half of the slab box and the other half on the top and it's just going to look like a little button which is also going to be um, painted with gold luster once it's been fired too. So the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add some feet to the box. I'm going to make some small square feet. Uh, so I start off by just rolling a clay coil and then flattening it out first with my fingertips and then using a pony roller, just using the roller to make them make it into a sort of a, a square coil. And then I'm just cutting them to length and making them three centimetres long. And the important thing when you're adding feet to the box is obviously to make them the same size so that when the box is sitting on the table it's not going to be wobbling around. So cut them to length and then we're just tidying up the end the end bits to make them nice and neat and slightly rounded. And then the last thing that I'm going to do just to make sure that they're all of the same height is just give them a bit of a pat with the with the paddle. Once I'm happy with the size and shape of the feet I just let them dry out and firm up a little bit, dry to the point of being leather hard and then I just attach them to the base of the box. And here's the finished box. It needs to dry out before it's bisque fired and then glazed. What I would say about making these boxes is that it's a really good idea to dry them really slowly and evenly. Cover them in a loose plastic bag and let them dry as slowly as you can. Um, in fact I'd recommend putting a sheet of cellophane between the, the base and the lid whilst it dries out because slab boxes are prone to cracking if they dry out too, too quickly. So do allow it to take its time. And now I wanted to show you how I make a textured slab box. 
This box has the same dimensions as the previous box, it just has a texture on the outside. So the way that I add a texture, I won't go through the whole process of making the box again, but I'll just show you how I add the texture. I use this masking here, this is made out of um, craft foam. I just mask off the edges of the slab because I don't want the texture to go on the edges because then that it would make it very difficult to join the slabs together without distorting the texture. And this piece of rubber that I'm adding here, this is a, a texturizing mat made by Mako. Um, they do quite a nice range. I just happen to really like this particular one. So I'm just fitting it within the, uh, the blue mask. Now it just happens to be that this the texturizing mat fits quite neatly within the blue mask, um, but not all of them do. And the, the blue mask is just really a way of uh, protecting the, the clay from getting texture on it where you don't want it to go. So then I just apply an even pressure to the texturizing mat with a pony roller just to make sure that the texture gets transferred onto the clay slab. And this is a finger roller by MKM Tools, which also adds quite a nice detail. And then lastly, I'm adding another texture roller to the top edge of the slab. And the idea is that this is going to add a bit of texture decoration to the lid of the, to the, lid of the box. And then just smoothing away any unwanted texture left behind by the roller. And then very carefully lifting up the, the texture mat and peeling it away to reveal the pattern that's been left behind. And here are the prepared slabs of clay. They've all got a similar sort of pattern on to give it a symmetrical feel when the box has been constructed. And this is the template that I use for this box. Although the measurements of the finished box are going to be the same as the previous one, the template's slightly different. If you remember with the previous box, the short side on the template was just a little bit shorter than the base. There was a gap on either side just to make room for the clay slabs on the long side of the box. Well, with this one, it's different. The short side is going to be exactly the same length as the base. And that's because I'm going to bevel the edges of the slab. With the previous box, the joints look like this. It was a square joint and it butted up against the short end. Whereas with this box, I am going to bevel the edges, which means that I'm going to cut the slabs at a 45 degree angle so that they fit together flush at the corner like this. Now you can bevel edges in a number of ways. One way of doing it is just getting a clay knife and angling your hand at what feels like a 45 degree angle to the clay and just drawing it along the edge of the clay slab like this. If you're using a clay knife, the best thing to do is just watch it and if you can, you can see there, you can just about see the tip of the knife is just, just in contact with the very edge of the slab, the underside of the slab. You've just got to have a steady hand and just draw it down as evenly as you can and it's quite an effective way of making a bevel if what you have is a clay knife to hand. Just remember to put your finger on the end just so that you don't drag the clay slab out of shape. However, you can use this, which is a clay beveling tool. I think that's what it's called. It's a pretty nifty device, makes beveling edges a bit easy. You just draw it down over the end of the clay and it creates a nice, perfectly beveled edge. So this is one of my clay slabs. It's got the pattern on one side and it has got the beveled edge on the other side. So I'm just turning it over and I'm going to slip and score the sides that are going to be joined. And then just carefully lift it up and put it up against the edge of the base. This clay is just a little bit softer than I would have liked it ideally but I didn't really have time to let it dry out anymore and it seemed to be it was just about okay to use. So put it in position, line it up and then press the seams together and I'm just using handy glaze pot there just to make sure that it doesn't fall over. 
and then I add the long side to the base too just to make the box as stable as it can be as quickly as possible and then the seams you can just pinch together gently and you can see there that it's helpful to not have a pattern right at the edge of the of the box because it so it doesn't get damaged when you're pinching the clay together and I joined the seams of the box again with a coil on the inside. I just wanted to show you this because what I'm using there is a stylus tool. A stylus tool has a pencil type shape but it's got two balls on either end and they come in different sizes. They're really handy for adding clay coils into slightly awkward places because you can get them right into corners like that and they do create a really nice smooth finish on the clay surface. This is the last slab to be added to the box. Just putting it into position and lining it up. And the clay is just a little bit softer than I would like it to be ideally. So I'm turning the box on its side. This means that um, if, if, the, if the last slab is horizontal, there's a possibility that it might slump and sag into the box and I don't want that to happen. So I've turned the box on its side so it's going to stay flat. I'm going to pinch the seams together and tidy them up and then I'm going to leave the box on its side for just a, a little while um, to allow the, the last clay slab to, to firm up so that it doesn't sag when I put the box upright. Once the slabs and the seams have had a chance to adhere to one another really well and firm up, I separate the lid from the box and add a gallery in the way that I did before. And here I am just checking that the lid fits well on the gallery and it seems to fit quite nicely. I'm going to make some round feet for this box. So I've got a round coil and I'm cutting it into four equal length sections. And then I'm just going to roll them into small balls and again flattening them a little bit with a wooden paddle and then attaching them to the base of the box. And here is the finished textured slab box all ready to be dried slowly and then fired. I do hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and keep your eye out for my next video which will be coming up any second now.